floss tube! It's the end of the month, and it's been a month since my last video, so of course it's time for a new one. I have a lot of things I'd like to talk about today, so it might be a long one. So prepare yourselves, grab some stitching, something delicious to drink perhaps, and settle in your stitchy spot and get ready. Um, first of all, I would like to say thanks for the continuing thoughts and uh, prayers and everything for my finger. I still don't have the final answer, but I've been working with, um, I have a wrap that I wear as well as two other splints to hopefully straighten the finger out and uh, start getting that tendon back in alignment. And then I go into the doctor again next Tuesday to see what the answer is regarding surgery or no surgery. So crossing all of my fingers, which I can cross this finger a little bit now, um, those two that I don't have to have surgery. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and move straight into the cross stitch now because it might be a long one. Um, first, I suppose I'm gonna show off a fully finished object for you guys. You saw in my last video on October 31st, on Halloween, that I had started Pretty Little New York by Satsuma Street and I was going to be stitching it as a wedding sampler for some friends of mine who live in Brooklyn. Well, I finished that and I just framed it today. In fact, I was waiting to make this video because I wanted to have framed this to show you guys. So here it is. There's gonna be a glare on it, so I apologize for that. Um, so there is Pretty Little New York. And I'll go through um, what I'm assuming the landmarks are. You have, of course, the Statue of Liberty over here next to the Madison Square Garden, next to the Public Library with the lions, next to the Arch at Washington Square Park, that's the Flatiron Building. This is the Brooklyn Bridge, of course. You have the Chrysler Building, the Empire State Building here in purple. You have the Freedom Tower, the New World Trade Center, and this is the Manhattan Bank Company Building or something like that, Manhattan Bank of Manhattan Building. Uh, technically Trump bought it, I think maybe in the 80s. I looked it up because I was familiar with this building, but I didn't know what it was called, and it's called the Trump Building right now. But, um, I'm just, I prefer to, to call it by something else. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, and then down here you can see that I wrote, uh, the first names of the bride and groom along with the date of the wedding. Uh, it's a couple little, one little heart, and, um, framed it in this frame. When I looked at their registry stuff, I noticed they had per, uh, requested a lot of kind of neutral tones, gray tones, and um, when I was home for Thanksgiving, my, I was with my mom, and if you remember, this is going to be a blast from the past for my subscribers, we went to Michael's to drop off Rainbow Row to get framed, finally! So, um, while I was there, I thought, well, I'll pick up a frame for this, because I had just finished it um, before we went to Michael's. This was before Thanksgiving, but the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, and these were 50, 40 or 50% off, so it was a good deal. And um, I think it looks really nice. Uh, I'm really glad that the design, uh, this is done 18 count Ada. The design fits in the eight by 10 matting here. I just think it turned out really nice. I'm pretty pleased with it. If you are a long time watcher, you'll know that framing is not my favorite thing to do, so um, I'm actually pretty pleased with how that is. Um, I'm going to set that very carefully over here. Um, so that was my only finish this month. Uh, no, I take that back. I don't have a picture of it. I, I literally don't even have a picture of it, but you've seen it before. The Zapdos Pokemon that I had, it was the electric bird. Um, I framed it in that same kind of thick 5x5 five five frame that I did all my other Pokemon finishes in. And that went down to Houston to live with my friend and her husband. So now they have their two Pokemon and their wedding sampler, they said, in their living room. I'm pretty sure that they're kind of set up. And then the, their respective Pokemons are on the side of the girl cat and the boy cat. Um, for that wedding sampler that I did ages ago. Um, so that, you know, warms my heart to think that I have a place in their home still. Um, so next, I suppose I shall go on to uh, Whips. 
The first whip I'm going to show you is one that I got a little bit of progress on. And you've seen these patterns a lot, and I know a few people have, are working on them still. But what I'm going to show you first is my Singa Sampler. It's got all bent up because, of course, when I'm out working with my patterns, Daenerys, my cat, likes to get up. And even though she could go around them very easily, she steps all over them. So I don't know if you can tell, it's just a little wrinkly there. Um, but anyhow, I'm working on the first square, which is doe, a deer, a female deer. Or, I'm pretty sure Carolyn said last time I was talking about this pattern. She's like, sing, Brittany. So here, this is for you, Carolyn. Doe, a deer, a female deer, is the one I'm working on right now. So this is how far I got. Now with this piece, uh, those of you that have the pattern know that all of the um, threads called for our gentle arts or weak dye works. Um, I had a lot of those variegated threads left over from my wedding samplers that I did earlier this year. So I'm gonna use those, kind of stretch them as far as they can go and use them for some key pieces, but I'm also planning to use some DMC um, alternatives for the um, larger parts. So this is how far I, ha I am. And this is progress from, from where you last saw it. The, um, First time I showed it to you, I think I only had this border kind of up to over here. So I finished the border, and now it says, Doe a deer. Um, and as I was saying, I'm, I'm planning on kind of the feature parts being the fancy threads. So I think all of the big letters of the solfege syllables I'm going to do in the variegated. And then... Uh, the rest of the letters, because I won't have enough to do all the letters, is going to be a DMC alternative. So the main two colors in this pattern are this uh, kind of a brown color or a tan color and then a more of a golden color. So um, that's what I'm doing. If you're interested in precisely the threads I'm using, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. Um, but it would take me a little while to sort through and find the ones that these are in particular. Um, I chose to use my pinup aerial needle miner minder from uh, Gina's Unique Boutique because Ariel, of course, loves to sing as well. I have a feeling that she knew her solfege. She wouldn't have watched Sound of Music, I suppose, under the water. But I feel like Sebastian may have taught her or there was that prequel movie where it had her mom and I think her mom was a singer too. So, you know, I think, I think probably she knew her soul fish. Um, so yeah, that's Sing a Sampler so far. I really enjoy working on this piece and it's really pretty and, um, uh, with the letters and, and the blocks are pretty small. I think it'll stitch up quickly once I have time to devote to it. So that's whip number one. Whip number two is my Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams uh, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell Fly to Neverland. So this is what it's going to look like. This pattern I was very kindly gifted by Helga and EJ. I told you I'm going to say it every time. And if you don't like it, tell me because otherwise I'm going to say it. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you for gifting me this. Um, so I started in the middle right above Peter and am moving kind of up in this corner doing um, a certain color as far as it'll get and kind of filling in with other colors. Um, I'm not too much farther than when you first saw it last month, but I figured I'd pull it out and show it to you. This is where I'm at right now. So as you can see, I filled in a lot of the grays and blues and I'm um, coming up here. And what's kind of neat about this, um, if you look at the pattern, you can see here that the croc is here in the clouds and this part is his tail. So it's kind of fun. At least the clouds have a shape. So I'm not feeling like I'm stitching just clouds. <laughs> it makes it a little more fun. Um, so I think this is going along fairly well. Again, like with Sing a Sampler, um, this month I have been working on very specific projects because they have deadlines and they need to get done. So I haven't been able to really devote too much time to personal stitching. Um, but yeah, that is Peter Pan.
I know Brian is way ahead of me, I'm pretty sure. So I'll have to sit down and catch up with him sometime. And Dee Stitcher is also doing a Thomas Kincaid that she started with us on Halloween. And she's stitching a tree because she's stitching Snow White discovers the woodland cottage or discovers the cottage. Um, and she's making a beautiful tree that looks like a tree. <laughs> Okay, um, my next whip is one, again, that you haven't seen for a while because I am still hopelessly behind. Um, I had so many style stitches and personal stitches that came up, and I suppose, to be honest, uh, I got up through August on this piece and then kind of lost interest as far as September went. Um, because September on the Storytime Sampler, Frosted Punky, Pumpkin, Frosted Punky Storykin Sampler, I don't know what that would have been, but, um, was Black Beauty. And although, um, I watched the movie of Black Beauty all the time when I was little because I loved horses, and so then when I was in elementary school I read the book, and it's a great story, but for whatever reason the block to me... I don't know if I want to say it was boring. It was it was fun to stitch. It was easy to stitch. It was fine to stitch. But, like, Phantom is so cool, and I'm looking forward to stitching the Anne block. Um, so I finally, over Thanksgiving break, when I was home, got a chance to stitch that square. So last time you saw it, I had only the first two rows done, so I've added in Black Beauty. And next will be Anne of Green Gables for October. And the final square came out, and I'm really hoping I can get it done before the end of the year. This is going to be one of the projects that takes priority, I think, this month, because it would be fun to be able to finish it before the end of the year. So that's where I'm at on Storytime Sampler. Uh, the next whip I'm going to show you is my John Deere pattern um, that I made, and this is for my sister's husband. Um, they got married the other weekend, so I don't have to say fiancé anymore. And I, this is coming along too, actually. Um, I can't remember where I was the last time I showed it to you. Probably somewhere only John Deere, blah, 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 used. Maybe in here somewhere in the green. But as you can see, I finished all the text. It says, only John Deere quality farm equipment used here. And where I'm at now, I need to finish filling in these letters with white. And I need to fill in this whole decal. Uh, symbol with yellow and these are full crosses here there's a few full crosses here and random places up here but all of this majority is half crosses because I like to kind of cross them and then travel back so I'll probably come around here up and then uh, well here come back up go here come back and then come around this way and I'll finish it up um this was supposed to be for his birthday in September, but obviously that didn't happen. So it's hopefully going to be a Christmas present now. And uh, I think I can do it. This Storytime Sampler and a new start are going to be my priority pieces for the month of December. So Pretty Little New York by Satsuma Street was a wedding sampler, and I got invited to another wedding. I cannot attend, but... Um, the groom is a person who's been fun, you know, a fun presence and special in my life. And uh, I always used to, he's quite a bit younger with, than me, and so I always used to joke about his girlfriend, then girlfriend, now fiance and soon to be wife, and just kind of laughed, laughed with him about it. And so I wanted to make them something special, but I knew one, I don't have much time until the wedding, and two, I don't want it to sound selfish, and I know that everyone in the comments is probably going to say, we as stitchers, this is our hobby. We need to do things for us. And I believe that too. I think I've typed that in the comments. But it still feels a little selfish to say, I'm tired of stitching for other people. You know, doesn't that sound terrible? So, um, I decided that I was going to design a wedding sampler. And this is going to be five by seven. And um, so I, I, like I said, I decided I was going to make my own. Um, so this is my pattern. Um, I'm showing it to all of you because I made it. And um, uh, this is what it's, it's uh, some lilies here. Uh, Courtney ECR, 
I think I got your um, username right. Uh, it's close enough. She's the floss tuber with the basket who is doing the really beautiful lace bands on the um, kind of brown burlap type fabric. And she kind of inspired me to design this. Um, up here I have a little lace motif. It is flipped down here. These are lilies. And the text here says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Um, and it'll have the initials here and the date of the wedding there. And um, for you, those of you that don't know, this is a Bible verse. Um, the bride and groom, fairly certain the groom is at least, they are Christians, um, pretty devoted Christians. So I wanted to include something biblical because um, I thought that would mean a lot to them. Um, but at the same time, on the off chance that they aren't, which I'm pretty sure they are, but on the off chance that they aren't, it's just, you know, it's a really nice, loving saying, I think. Um, now, this Bible verse continues. I'm fairly certain it says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He walks among the lilies. And I didn't want to put that because I didn't want to put gender in there so that whoever was reading it, it still applies to them, you know. But I kind of paid homage to that with the lilies. Um, so that's what it's going to look like. And this is how far I've gotten so far. I have gotten that top lace motif done. Um, you can kind of see it there. So the color scheme on this, the lilies and the lace are light grays. Um, of course the green stems, there's a little bit of yellow for the stamen of the lilies. And then, um, the back stitching will be white, I'm fairly certain. We'll see how that goes. As you can see, it's on the same fabric as my John Deere pattern. Um, that should be enough space in there for me to just cut down this way. Um, give that enough space to frame or do a pillow or whatever, and then this enough space to do the same thing. So that's coming along. I think it's going to be a quick stitch, which is great because I would love to get it finished and sent to him um, so they can have it and so that I can get back to work on stitching some of my own things. That's so terrible to say. And no, I'm not stitching any Christmas presents or any Christmas things at this point. Maybe when I get some stuff done, then I'll feel like I can. But right now, I just I have things to do. And not just cross-stitch things. I have lots of things to do. Okay. So that was all of my progress that I've made this past month, uh, the month of November. I got a lot of great stitching time when I was at home. I was home for 10 days. Technically not home. I went to stay with my parents for about five days, then we drove up to see my grandparents in a different state and stayed with them for, you know, about five days and saw everyone and did the Thanksgiving thing. And um, now I'm back in New York for December until Christmas Eve. Um, but while I was home, I was able to get some cool things. I'm going to move into some fun things that I got for cross stitching. The first thing is uh, not pattern or anything. But while I was home and had access to a car and possibly tools or whatever, I went to uh, Home Depot and bought all of the PVC pipe and fittings that I would need to make a lap stand. Now, Pam Reed has the tutorial, the YouTube tutorial for this, and hers is, uh, this one is actually eight inches here. So these are the clips for my eight inch Q-snap. But what I decided I was going to do is I have, or I cut extra 12 by 12 pieces. So what I do if I'd like something bigger is I can take these out and take all of this apart and just switch it around to where the 8 inch pipes are here and the 12 inch ones are here and here. Um, and I'm really loving it so far. I've not quite gotten the hang of two-handed stitching. Uh, but I guess that takes practice. Uh, a question I wanted to ask all of you who stitch on a stand um, and use two-handed stitching, which of your hands goes on top? Is it your dominant hand or your other hand? Um, because my instinct would say to put your dominant hand on top, but my stupid hand has trouble finding the holes back there, whereas this one is much more adept at finding the holes. So just a question. I would love to hear your advice. I'm sure with practice, the stupid hand can get better at that, but <laughs> it's just was something I noticed as I started trying to, to stitch two-handed. So that was very exciting, and I am grateful for my dad for taking me to the, to the store and helping me pick everything out and 
being there. <laughs> and um, while I was home as well, we went to a big used bookstore. And of course, I went to the cross stitch, stitch section to see what they had. And I found a few books, um, which I would like to share with you guys. And uh, these books are pretty big. There's a lot of designs in them. And I, I don't want to do a whole flip through um, in this video because there's so many things I want to talk about, but I'll show you some of my favorite designs in them. I marked a few of them out. This one is called 500 Cross Stitch Designs by Sam Hawkins for the American School of Needlework Incorporated. Now this one is kind of fun because it's a lot of tiny little motifs. I'm sure someone's showed it on here before, but um, what's nice at least is that all of them, all of the motifs are kind of stitched on... Uh, just a couple pieces of fabric, so it's super easy to just kind of put this up here and you can look at this. This one is called uh, Kitchen Motifs. And I guess I kind of liked the geese and the fruit and um, those peas in a pod are pretty cute. Just some fun little motifs. Um, this one is Baby Motifs, and the ones that I particularly liked... Um, were these down here? It's a uh, quack quack here and a ba ba there. Here a moo, here a moo. Everywhere an oink oink. So of course, old McDonald. Those would be super cute on baby bibs or anything. Just some really cute little um, pictures there. And I don't need to show you that one. I know a lot of people like houses. And if you don't want to do a really big house, here's a lot of really small houses. These little ones me of Rainbow Row. Definitely. There's even an outhouse. That's pretty silly. Um, and then... This, the, I thought these were really cool. I liked the herbs over here. Some nice flowers and pots. The cacti up here. Or just the one cactus. I thought that one was neat, and then for all of you obsessed with Santa Clauses, here's a bunch of small Santa Clauses to stitch. And how many of those would make adorable uh, cards, right? I thought they were cute at least. Um, there's also like patriotic stitches, there's uh, like profession stitches, animal stitches, there's a whole bunch of different themes in here. Um, but I thought, I don't have anything with a bunch of small motifs, so I thought, well, who knows, maybe I'll need some of those someday. Um, this one is called Special Occasions in Cross Stitch, Warm and Welcoming Designs for Holidays and Celebrations by the Editors of Rodale Craft Books. That's what the front of it looks like. And um, this one, when I was flipping through it to kind of show you some things in it, I was a little disappointed. I kind of thought, well, why did I get that? Um, the one thing that I'm super excited about, or I really like, is this guy. He's called Mr. Fancy. Oh, gosh, that's a pattern. So sorry. One moment. Okay. That's Mr. Fancy Pants. And uh, this part, of course, is not cross stitch, but his pants are, and they're all a bunch of little vegetables. How cute is that? I thought that would be such a fun Easter decoration to have. Um, they have a, like, some stitches by month, and some of them are nice. But others of them I just don't much care for. Let me see if I can find one that I like. I do have them marked. Uh, I kind of like this one. This one is the September, the September stitch. It's called S September Majesty, and it's a deer with a mountain and trees. Um, there's a cute bunny for April, I'm pretty sure. Um, I like, uh, they have, uh, the seasonal banners, too. I think Winters is the coolest. The other ones, it's interesting, because the other ones have, a uh, flower picked, and then, like, a fruit motif up here. But this one is the evergreen tree, the snowy evergreen with the birds on it, and the snowflakes. I really liked that. Um... There's a, there's a lot of stuff in here. If if someone really really wanted me to go through this, I would. But like for example, here's uh, here's the summer banner. So as you can see, it has the sunflower and 
other flowers and then strawberries up here which you could probably do those strawberries on their own they're kind of cute so that's this one i like mr fancy pants we'll see if i stitch him so i don't know there you go <laughs> uh and the, this is one of the last ones it's uh called glorious cross stitch more than 50 studying projects for every room in your home by chris rankin there's some really pretty things in here um some cool samplers i liked that look at that china the teapots pretty i know this isn't pyrex but it reminds me of pyrex stitches display with all of her pyrex back there um sailing ships. I don't have any use for a nautical theme, but I still like it. Um, let's see. I feel bad. I don't want to take forever. I really liked these. Um, this pattern is called Water Hyacinths. And just look at the colors in the bottle here. How gorgeous are those? I mean, it looks like watercolor. I love that. I love it a lot. Um, so those are really pretty. Let's see. Let's see. This fish sampler is kind of neat. Tropical fish. And the only frustrating thing about this book is some of the um, example pictures are very small. That's a teapot sampler. I thought it was very neat. Teapot and teacups. And it says treasures for tea time. Okay, this is the reason I got this book, and you guys are not going to be surprised. Um, so this guy, I mean, he's cute, a little chubby. Would I stitch that in heaven in my home? Well, maybe, just perhaps. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I really, really liked. Um, these little egg warmers. I have no use for an egg warmer, but look how cute they are. Cute little kitties. Um, not fluffy, and I, I guess, but that's okay. I have enough fluff with my kitty cat. She leaves her hair everywhere. Um, and then I really liked this. This is a small picture. You're probably not going to be able to tell what it is, but they're little ornaments. This is Santa. This is a bear dressed like Santa. A Christmas tree, a snowman. This is a little kitten in a stocking. And they have the patterns over here. I wish I could show you them because you can see them a little better. But those are also really cute. So that was one of the reasons why I got it. Um, someone was talking about having a book with a whole bunch of um, vintage like cross-stitch meant for clothing. This also has a clothing section. And there's some pretty... Hello again, sorry about that. Um, I was running out of storage, and so my Kindle was like, you should archive these things. And now the lighting's kind of going crazy. But when I left, I was saying that this book has some pretty, pretty great um, uh, models, portraits of people wearing cross-stitched clothing. <laughs> Look at this lovely person. Enjoying their tulips, cross-stitched tulips on this, this beautiful jacket. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. There's some more like that. Um, so, yeah. Some neat things in here. Some interesting things. But I really liked some of those samplers were cool. I always feel a little bad getting books like this because I just worry that I won't stitch anything out of them. And then they'll be sitting here forever, and I won't have used them, but they were sitting in a bookstore not being used either. Um, and they weren't very expensive, so I suppose I don't feel really terrible about it. Um, there was one more book that I got when I got those, and I'll talk about it a little later. I'd like to go into it last because um, there's more of a story behind it, and it's not technically patterns. But I wanted to share with you also really quickly um, some patterns that I designed since I last saw you guys. Um, I did the next uh, design in my Honey Bear Hot Stuff um, kitchen punny pet name type series. And it's called Give Me Some Sugar. So it's a sugar bowl with two little lovebirds here. 
and um, of course up there it says give me some sugar. So when I was making this one I thought all of a sudden one evening I was like I really want to do a pink one. And then I thought well sugar could probably be pink. And I was going to do just like a like a sugar package but that's boring and then maybe like sugar cubes. But the, uh, I probably could have done a couple sugar cubes down here but I kind of like how simple that is. There could have been, I guess, some sugar cubes down here, but I like that. And it keeps the colors down. Um, the next one I did uh, was an idea I had at a friend's wedding. And it's called uh, Raptorous Love. Um, like raptors. So here it is. It's two raptors kind of making a heart with their tails. And it says, of course, down here, Raptorous Love. And... Um, yeah, I made that because there's not enough dinosaur patterns around. And there's not enough scientifically accurate dinosaur patterns around. Not that this is very particularly scientifically accurate, but at least it's fluffy, um, covered in feathers. I like it. I am going, I'd like to stitch, of course, both of these to get the model stitches ready. The last uh, one that I designed, besides my wedding sampler, is this one. It's another dinosaur um, stitch. It is a T-Rex, and he says, I'm not fat, uh, just fluffy. Because again, scientifically accurate dinos, T-Rex is most likely, quite possibly, recovered with a fine downy fluff. So, there you go. Um, those are the new patterns I designed this month. If you are interested in any of them, um, they are in my Etsy store. Just so you know where they're at, that's not me being like, buy my patterns, but if you want to know where to get any of them, that's where they are. Um, one last thing, sorry, one last thing, uh, I, I bought this off of eBay. Um, I had had these patterns in my kind of files on my computer for a while. However, I became concerned that they weren't. Legally, on Pinterest, of course, they weren't actually free patterns and they belonged to somebody. So I posted on Stitch Mania and someone uh, suggested I do a reverse image search on Google, which is a very handy thing if you're looking for a pattern or you're wondering who, the, who made the pattern and where you can buy it. Um, you can enter the picture into Google and it will reverse image search and you can find uh, sources for it. So... I had seen these really adorable little kitten ornaments on Pinterest and had saved the files and wanted to know where they were from so that I could stitch them with a guilty free conscious conscience and um, found that out that they are a very vintage dimensions kit from 1997. So I guess not as vintage as it could be, but pretty vintage. Um, I bought the kit on eBay. I went straight to eBay and found it, thankfully. And so it has the floss and it has plastic canvas for you to make all these cute kittens. Um, this one's... Either of these could be me, I guess. My, um, if I were a cat, I, I... This is a little nerdy information about Brittany. I was obsessed with Cats the Musical in middle school and my friend and I decided we were going to make characters based on ourselves. So in time I was like, Lizzie, you should make, um, draw and color cats based on us. And so she did and I was a tabby. I was an orange tabby with red stripes like that. So this could be me, but this is probably more me because she's singing. So she's also orange, so that could be me too. Actually, kind of a funny story, my name Blimey Cat Stitches comes from the name of that original cat's character because my very first internet presence was kind of about Cats the Musical. Um, so that kind of looks like Blimey Cat right there. She's cute. They're all cute. They're kittens. Of course they are. Okay. This is the last thing that was added to my possessions and this is this is pretty special um while I was browsing through the cross stitch section at that used bookstore I saw a book and on the spine it said very faintly it said Mary Martin's or Mary Martin it said needlepoint Mary Martin's needlepoint yeah it said Mary Martin's needlepoint 
Now, if the name Mary Martin does not ring any bells for you, she actually is a fairly well-known actress, uh, mainly Broadway and stage acting. She created some very well-known and lovable roles in musical theater. She was the original Nellie Forbush in South Pacific. She was the original Maria Von Trapp on Broadway in The Sound of Music. That was before the movie where Julie Andrews starred. And she was the original Peter Pan in the very famous, the most famous musical version of Peter Pan, the one that I was in and the one that I still really like. Um, so for a long time, she's really been kind of one of my role models slash idols, someone I would love to follow in her in her footsteps, and, and if I had her career, that would be awesome. She also got pretty well known playing Annie Oakley in Annie Get Your Gun, and she was in Hello Dolly, did that different places. She wasn't didn't originate any of those parts, but she had a lot of success playing those roles. Um, what I love about her is that she was playing roles like Nellie was the ingenue role. She was a lead female in South Pacific, but she was not a Lori like in Oklahoma. She was not a Maria in West Side Story. She was not, um, who was it, Julie Jordan in Carousel. You know, she wasn't singing A's and C's and she wasn't singing up here. She sang with her chest voice. It was still beautiful and it was still strong. She sang in her chest voice. And her characters weren't your perfect, lovesick, you know, women. They had character. They had personality. They had humor. And so I I just saw in her what I would like to become. And, and all of those roles are roles that I would love to play someday. Um, so... It was really interesting because this is the book, Mary Martin's Needlepoint. And I opened it. Well, first of all, I found one with the book cover on it and turned around. That is her. This is Mary Martin. And I opened the book and realize, and I had known this back in a while. I'll tell you about that later in another video. But this is not a book with patterns in it. This is a book showcasing her journey and her passion for needlepoint. It's not cross stitch, but it is needlework. And I'm gonna try not to cry because I'm gonna feel silly crying about it, but just to find that connection with somebody you admire so much, it's like kind of weird and really cool to think that she was in her dressing rooms on Broadway. I haven't gotten there yet, but she was in her dressing rooms working on her needlepoint. Let me see, I had a picture of her um, stitching. That was pretty cool. This is a picture of her doing some of her needlepoint projects. This is a, what, five by seven rug that she worked on for three years. It went all over the world with her. It went to London, it went islands you know I think she was working on it she started on it when she was in South Pacific and um, finished it three years later and here's some other of her needlework projects um, so I'm really looking forward to reading this book and it's just so crazy that I was in this used bookstore in Nashville Tennessee and saw it and just like my heart stopped it was it was a really cool moment um, she has a lot of really neat pieces in here, but of course my favorite by far has got to be this. She calls it her theater sampler. Um, so she took her the all the roles I mis that she originated, um, this is her signature here, um, and took little motifs from those shows and put them all into a sampler. And I love this idea. And I haven't originated any roles, but I'd love to take some of my favorite shows and find little pieces to design and stitch together on a sampler. Um, her first famous Broadway uh, role was a role in a show called Leave It To Me where she sang My Heart Belongs To Daddy. And she was this girl who had been sent up to Alaska and was sitting on luggage singing this uh, really sexy, sultry, teasing, flirty song. And so this is a furred bonnet that she wore in that. Um, this one is from a show she was in called A Touch of Venus, where she was a statue come to life. Um, the artist fell in love with her and brought her to life, where she was like this beautiful woman, 
And so that chair and her chiffon scarf were part of that. Um, what is that one? I don't remember what that one is, actually. I don't know if that's... I, I can't remember. Uh, this one is from a show called Loot Song. Um, this one is South Pacific. Her character sings uh, one of her most famous songs while sitting on a gasoline can and wears an adorable straw hat. Uh, most of you will probably be able to guess this one. This is Sound of Music, Maria's dress and her guitar. This one is, of course, Peter Pan and his shadow. I love this. It's so adorable. And uh, this is from a show that she did called I Do, I Do. It was a two-person show about the journey of a couple in their married life. Kind of like a uh, vintage or a, a previous incarnation of uh, the last five years. But I, I haven't seen I Do, I Do, actually, and I don't know much about it. Um, I have a feeling there's not as much drama in it. But there could be. I don't know. Like I said, I have only heard very few songs from it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share this with you because I thought it was pretty special. It means a lot to me. And to have just have forgotten about it and to have found it now in the moment when Cross Stitch and Needlepoint and this community that I found and everything is such a big part of my life to have found out that it was a big part of her life too. Um, and as I read this, if I find out any other cool things, and if you want to know any other cool thing, you know, like, if that's something that would be interesting, I'll share it. Um, I'm just excited to read this. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Um, so, something else I kind of want to do in the future, uh, it's similar to what Coffee Stitcher did, uh, because this is cool, and I mean... A little bit of Broadway history in a way. I actually have a Peter Pan collection, a bunch of memorabilia from the stage shows, um, vintage memorabilia that I would love to share with you guys because I, I don't get to pull it out often and um, I'm going to do it, I think. And I'll put it at the end of my video so if you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. Um, this video has been split into like four parts by my Kindle, so I'm not sure how long it is. If it's looking like it's too long, I'm going to stop here and say sayonara, goodbye, see you later, so long for a while, Vita Zane, goodbye. Um, but if it's not, you might see some more. So, goodbye if it is. I'll see you next time. And if it's not, I wanted to show you some um, UFOs. I don't have any cross-stitch UFOs, but I have... Uh, some of you are knitters, some of you are quilters, and this concerns both of you guys. So, um, I have knit a lot of scarves. I have knit leg and arm warmers. Again, my fascination with Cats the Musicals led me into making Cats costumes, which then led me into doing the leg and arm warmers. And I have some really cool things of those, but my goal when knitting was always to knit a sweater. And I knit maybe a third of a sweater or half of a sweater. This is the pattern I picked and I think this is part of the problem as to why it's become a UFO is I'm just not, I wouldn't wear this anymore. I would have worn it at the time that I did it. So it's this really colorful uh, sweater. I changed the colors on this so it doesn't look exactly like this but that's the goal of how it was to fit when and if I was to have finished it. By the way, this is the basket that this UFO resides in. Um, I found this in my grandma's at a closet and I uh, thought it was really neat. It's a vintage like straw tropical purse. I really thought it was cool. Anyway, uh, these were the pieces that I finished and I have to be very careful with this because they're not on needles right now. The piece that should be on needles is not. Or did I finish these pieces? I can't remember. Uh, this is the back. So I think the colors on my sweater are a little better than the colors on there. I have brown, yellow, green, a deep red, and this teal. So the main colors are the teal and the green, which are both still colors I like. Um, the uh, 
the things are, these are different. The arm things are different a little. This is the one with all the color changes on that side, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but maybe with blocking and the sewing, maybe that could be fixed. I don't know. I've never done really complex knitting. This is my first try. And then I have the, oh yeah, this is the one that is uh, not on needles. This is almost done. I have the, um, the front panels too. So I have these and it has the brown, of course, at the bottom. I have those two. So I'm actually very close to finishing this other panel. And I suppose that's the majority. Maybe the sleeves would take a little bit to knit. I feel like knitting goes pretty quickly, and I don't know that the sleeves have all of this more intricate work. That's like the most complex knitting stuff I've ever done. It's like yarn overs and adding stitches and tying random stitches in. and Yeah, it took me, it was, it was difficult. It is difficult. Um, so those of you that do really complex knitting things, I admire you. I was into it for a little bit and I got this far on a sweater. But I don't know that it's ever going to get finished. I'm glad though because I've seen the UFOs that some of you have so I don't feel quite so guilty. So that is a giant, giant UFO. No, it's not that giant. This next one is the giant one. That is a UFO, a knitting UFO. And then, this is my giant UFO. So I decided when I moved into Amish country that I was gonna make a quilt. And in my mind, I had grand ideas of entering it into quilting festivals and fairs or whatever. And I was like, what can I do that's really unique? So I decided that I was gonna do like a scene. And down on the bottom was going to be this raptor sleeping is it'd be a feathered raptor, but he didn't have arm feathers, like the wings that kind of look there. And he would be dreaming, and so down on the bottom it would be a jungle scene. He would be dreaming, up here it'd have a dream bubble, and he would be flying with his wings. And um, so the, the middle panel would be this picture, and then I decided the outer panel was gonna be log cabin blocks. And the way that I decided I was going to do it is I picked a color scheme for the bottom, which was brown and green, picked a few different shades of brown and green, and then picked um, uh, blues and a, and a light yellow for the top panel, or the top half. This is a twin size quilt top. And um, I guess first I'll show you the bottom half if I can, because um, it's... It's big. Not as big as Helga's nose quilt, but it's big. Um, you can't even see it. I'm sorry. I'll move back a little bit. Okay, so that's the bottom panel. You can see there I have my log cabin blocks, and those were all hand stitched actually while I was at the theater and at, while I was at home. And this top part is hand appliqued um, jungle plants. Now, as the quilt comes up, you can see uh, the, co the colors change. So in this one, I added a few, I added just one new color. In this one, I added kind of a mixture of colors, I think half and half, and then uh, as it goes into the sky, of course, the colors transfer to um, this sky. So those are clouds, hand appliqued clouds. And these are hand stitched blocks. I did machine stitch um, the blocks together, I believe. No, the, the blocks are stitched together by hand, but I did machine stitch uh, the blocks to the center panel, so the, the borders to that center panel. And um, I chose to keep the hearth of the log cabin red to kind of be a little traditional in that way, since this is definitely non-traditional in every other way. So 
I got the background completed, as you can see, and I was moving on to the um, the characters, so the raptors, the dinosaurs. And at the time, I was convinced that I didn't care for the way that machine applique looked. So I decided I was going to hand applique these characters. And I got pretty far on one of them. This is the, um, this is the flying raptor. I'm going to see if I can hold him up for you. Um, gosh, his jaw is hanging like a skeleton over here. So here he is. That's his joyful, happy face. I'm flying face. Um, these pieces are all sewn together by hand. The eye is appliqued onto that white piece by hand. Um, and here is his top wing. These are all stitched together by hand, appliqued onto that red piece by hand. Here's the bottom wing, also appliqued by hand. Um, his feet. Um, actually, I, I'm going to pause this so you can see him, because he's pretty cool. Okay, so there he is spread out. He looks a little more impressive instead of hanging and all wrinkly. I mean, he is very wrinkly. Um, so there's his leg going down. And I pulled this out, too, um, because I was stopped and I didn't have this out. This was the original design for it. Um, so as you can see, this is the happy raptor up on top. There's the sleeping raptor on the bottom. And kind of another cool detail that would have happened is that the tails would have overlapped those borders so that you kind of have the, um, the repetition there on the top to the bottom. <sighs> but all of these little feathers are just very tedious, especially hand appliquing. And really just the, the practicality of hand applicating a quilt like that, it would have to be a wall quilt. You couldn't use it because you couldn't wash it. If you washed it, the threads would get loose and it would fray. And uh, I wish I had known more before. I mean, this was the first quilting project I ever attempted, which was kind of silly. And I wish I had known more beforehand because I would have realized to do it the right way, to use the machine applique, if I wanted it to be functional and, you know, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to pause again so I can get back to the other camera view so I can uh, wrap this up. Uh, so I'll see you soon. One second. I'm back. Um, so yeah, that was my raptor quilt. And uh, I have, however, successfully finished three other quilted pieces. Um, one was an actual baby quilt that turned out really nice. Um, and two were kind of art hanging, wall hanging quilts for wedding gifts that turned out really cool. Um, I'll perhaps share those sometime. Just this raptor project though, it's really ambitious, but it could be really cool. Like my other thought was to quilt feathers into the raptor's feathers and scales into the raptor scales like around the eyes to get, do big ones and then get smaller and smaller and like that would be cool, yeah, but it would take a long, long time, especially I don't have a quilting machine and hand quilt, hand stitching all of this would just be a lot. So it saddens me that this is a UFO, but just, it just feels futile, the futility of putting in a stitch that on something that will probably never be finished is sad. I suppose I could go back and go over those seams with machine applique. Maybe I'll do that if I get the the motivation to do it someday, but that's my raptor quilt. And it's kind of something fun though. The raptor that was in my raptor pattern, this one right here, um, and this raptor are kind of the same raptor. Also, I have a raptor costume that looks like this, too. So these are all kind of the same raptor. Um, who is my raptor character, I guess? I have a cat character and a raptor character. No, I'm a nerd. That's okay. I have a dragon character, too, who might make an appearance in the cross-stitch someday as well. Um, 
I'm sure this is a really, really, really absurdly long video at this point, and my voice is getting tired. So I'm going to take this moment to say thank you again to all of you wonderful subscribers and commenters and those of you who like my videos. And um, I just, I treasure my relationship with all of you online. And I love my friends that I've made. And you guys are always so supportive and caring for me. And I just really appreciate that. Um... Oh gosh, there was another thing I was going to say, but I can't, I can't remember. Oh, yes, no, I remember. Um, I checked today and I have 910 subscribers. I just, I can't believe it. I feel like Macaulay Culkin here. Um, that's 90 subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers, and I just, I'm astounded. I really, I really don't know what to say, but thank you for all of you who, who watch and are actually watching. Um... Pyrex Stitches knows that I have two songs in the works, so I have a feeling that for 1,000 subscribers, there should be a new song. I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm thinking there will be a new one. I don't want to spoil any of it. Pyrex Stitches, don't spoil any of it either. Um, but hopefully you guys will have that to look forward to. And that's it. I'm officially leaving. If I come back, give me a virtual slap across the face. It's also getting not terribly late, but I'm also getting tired, so I'm rambling. Okay, that's it. I'm saying goodbye. Bye, everyone! Until next time, happy stitching.